There's multiple offers. It's kind of crazy. We're going to talk about all of that and much more right after this. All right, we are back and we are talking about the Calgary real estate market. Today is March 4th, just so everybody knows. And uh, we're talking about what has happened over February and the last couple months. I am joined by the wonderful Rebecca Chamberlain. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm good. It's been a busy six weeks. As it really has. Yeah, it's been, I think, you know, we're coming up uh, to the anniversary of COVID on March 11th. I yeah, think like when 10 11 days. Yeah. And well, I, that was like our day. Yeah. The 15th when we got told that the girls were going to school the yeah. next day. And it's like, what the? <laughs> yeah. I think every parent remembers when we get this announcement. That Sunday afternoon. Yeah. From Ooh. the government that no one's going to school. <laughs> oh, breathe. It breathe, brings me anxiety to think about it. It's true. And uh, yeah, we're coming up on that. And the last, I mean, the last, yeah, the last six weeks or the last two months, um, I mean, it's been crazy. It's been yeah. super full. Uh, I mean, our team went conditional. I think it was on 66 houses over 50 something days or 30, 60 days or whatever. And so it's uh, it's been super busy, super, yeah. super busy. And the market's that way, right? Yeah. And I think, I mean, in no time have you been told to stay at home and and sold houses in a pandemic. And really, the government has kind of said that's the only place they want you is to be at home. Is to be at home. And on top of that, um, who, how is it okay to have showings in your house or people in your house, but you can't even have your mom over? Like, there's a lot of confusing messages. Yeah. And I think that has, you know, sparked to lower inventory. And just the uncertainty on March 11th, I was talking with Jesse, uh, who's my assistant and I work with, and I said, can you, like, it was hard to even comprehend a year ago. We just, we thought the world was shutting down. It was just, yeah. it's just so crazy it's to, just been what a year. to comprehend. What a year. So uh, we would love to include you in the conversation. So if you have questions or thoughts of this market, things that you're seeing, anything like that, throw them in the comments below and uh, we will see that and uh, we will add you to the conversation that we're having. So I'm not, I, let's just jump right in. Yep. Let's, let's jump in. Let's talk about what's happening in this market. So the first thing that I wanted to show everybody is this right here. So um, this is the stats that we go through pretty much most months uh, where we're actually looking at what is happening. And so this is on our Instagram channel. So you can see our, our uh, URL, and, but not the URL, but the username there. So you can follow us at Chamberlain Group on Instagram and you'll see all this kind of stuff. And so um, let's just take a look. So Calgary condos and houses. So this is the whole market itself. And the whole market uh, right now, the benchmark price is sitting at $431,000, which is up about 3.8% from last year. And the total number of sales in February uh, is uh, 1,800 sales, and that is up 55% uh, year over year. Yeah, it's, yeah, again, I think always when there's a lack of inventory, builders built less, there's just, there, there is just, we've just seen an uptick. Yeah. Well, and on that note, you said builders. There's actually a, an article here that came out this morning um, the, from... So if anyone else follows this, the ATB Owl, uh, it's a great... Uh, it's a great... Uh, um, sorry, my cameras are all messed up. There we go. It's a, it's a really good um, uh, email, a daily email that just talks about the Alberta economy, what's happening. And they said this morning, residential building permits in Alberta roar out of the gate in 2021. And so they always have charts, which I appreciate, kind of puts things into perspective. So in 2018, we were seeing, you know, these are $1.2 billion uh, of building permits that were happening. And it dropped and it changed. And, uh, and someone said, dream team. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's, more, it's more her. I have no idea. Here. I don't know who said it, but it's good. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, and so with this, it's it's really interesting because we obviously in in early 2020 we saw this just drop off like crazy, uh, but it's it really is roaring back. Like that is a steep increase for new yeah. builds, right? But if you think of how much it's dropped, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that the economy in Calgary has been shaky for the last you know, couple year, five year, five, years, five, six years, years yeah. 
we, you know, prices have been on the down low. So then we've seen less builders. So the optimism is definitely increased, but we're still not at the levels we were at in 2018. That's right. No, we so definitely we're still, so, I mean, we're seeing increases, but we need to, it's, it's all relative to kind of what we've What's seen happening. in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and Jasmine, uh, makes a comment. It's a mixed bag. You never know just what will happen. Um, I mean, the story of Jasmine and Justin is they had their condo on the market, uh, last year. We could barely get people to want to buy it. And we put it on last week and it went within three days. Yeah. For 10 grand more than what we could even try to get before. And so what that's what that's her perspective, right, is is coming. It's really a mixed bag. You don't know what's going to happen. And there's just sometimes these little pockets of the market um, that that are just waiting for the right property to come on and it'll it'll sell. Well, and, and you're in a time where I mean, and I think of this um, in regards to WestJet know so many and have helped so many WestJet pilots um, move to Calgary. And um, and I my heart is very sad for the, for them as you know the government basically has made travel not something that yeah. anyone's ex- excited ab- excited yeah. about doing and uh, so I think that your home or you know there's you know our snowbirds aren't going to the states there's just all these shifts and now we're you know we're COVID was a reset button so yeah. you know all these patterns and all these you know holidays that we've and, and uh, practices that we have done our whole lives are being reset. And so yeah. our homes are, you know, our gym, our, our churches, our gatherings of online, which, I mean, you can only stare at some set of walls for yeah. so long. But you know what's really good? What's that? We're out of February. Oh, and, and what is February? It's usually really cold. Yeah. Thank the Lord. So <laughs> we, are, we are out of February. <laughs> we are moving forward. And this is a good thing. And we can get a suntan. <laughs> and we can maybe get that suntan. That's right. Um, all right. So let's continue on. So, um, yeah. So, again, so the number of new listings uh, increased um, by 13% um, year over year. But inventory is still down quite a bit. So 4,500. I mean, this number when we came out of Christmas was sitting a lot closer. Was it 36, 3,700? Yeah. Something like that. So, so this is a good sign. There is more inventory coming on the market. Yeah. That is that is good. Uh, but it's it's still it is really really low. Yeah. Not a lot. Of it's the low and it's making buyers have to kind of jump. You you don't have a lot of days to think about a house if if it catches your eye. It's pr- yeah. You know, there's because it could go. Yeah. I mean, Alex on our on our team this morning said he had a place in Kincora. You know. 2200 probably a regular house in Concora kind of thing but ended up getting seven offers on it yeah uh, over the last couple of days so it's it's definitely a different market for sure and so talk about detached houses specifically um, so we have uh, benchmark price is 502 um, year over year we're up five percent total sales is 1100 and we're up 65 percent year over year yeah that is a big jump compared yeah. to last year but again it's, it's, this is a really strange year, like it was last year. Yeah. And this is reacting and people are spending money locally. Yeah. And we have to, like, I think as far as pricing it, we really saw the bot like we saw the bottom last year. And now, you know, even compared to pricing, what's being priced, those homes are kind of at 2019, 2018 levels. So, you know, it's getting people's attention and they're going, how, how is there already multiple offers? Yeah. But the reality is, is that this house, the house that probably they're looking at online would have been more in 2018. Yeah. So, so we just have to context that as well so that you, you can context and it doesn't feel so um, unknown and chaotic. Totally. Um, so someone asked an interesting question here. Uh, let me throw it up here. So as vaccines ramp up and the pandemic comes to an end, hopefully sooner than later, do you feel this market will continue or will people going back to actual offices change the demand for houses? Yeah, such, such a big question. That's a big question. Such a big question <laughs> in the sense that I, you know, um, I think everyone has to speak individually. Um, do they like working from home? Does their office, does that work? I think we all miss people. Like I, yeah. I, you know, miss being able to give someone a hug without just feeling like, can you touch someone? Can you shake their hand? Like, <laughs> is, is someone going to see me doing yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> so it, I think that we just miss community. And so for sure, we've all been able to take a breath, which, you know, for any parent, um, you know, hockey parent or 
dance, parent, there's been a breath of fresh air. But yeah. at the same time, there was a hum of life and a community that I think we're all missing. Yeah. Well, and I think there are things that will not change back. I mean, there are people that we've talked to who have said, no, like they're actually working from home forever now. Yeah, um, and so there's this mixed bag of things. And so will this demand continue? Will this uh, push forward? I, I've read a lot of mix articles, some saying that this was pent up for a long time and now finally it's been allowed to be released. Right. And it'll be here for a while. Um, but again, they don't, most of those places that are taught, they're thinking about uh, don't also have the, the mix of the oil economy that we do. And so there's also that kind of a mixed message that we're going to have here. And so is it going to be multiple offers? Is it going to be this crazy I don't for the think, next number yeah. of years? I don't think so. Uh, yeah. And I think you, you know, as far as even life stages, as far as people are waiting a little bit longer, sometimes to get married or have kids. And so that usually pairs with buying a house. Yeah. And so there's a whole, you know, the, it, there's the economy, but then there's just people's um, practices as far as just lifestyle. Some people, you know, a uh, huge rush in the market has been uh, w professional women buying, um, you know, like rent or, or not a rental, but like ne their first home, first homes, yeah. uh, especially um, people that are teachers or nurses uh, getting in there. Um, there's not the same markers, you know, it's not the same, you know, even compared to our parents' generation where you'd have you know, get married and have babies soon. That's not happening yeah. as much. And now, you know, I think for the baby boomer demographic, I talk about this a lot. Um, they, ha you know, I feel for that in COVID, they've been left at home um, by themselves, sometimes not with grandkids, not going to jobs. Yeah. And now they're thinking, okay, maybe this house is too big or I need a change or I, you know, slipped and fell and had an accident. So that type of, you know, that type of product may be coming on the market, but they also, you know, don't want to sit in a condo or be yeah. trapped anywhere. So lots of, of windows, lots of good yeah. conversations to have. Yeah, no, it's true. Great question. I, I don't, it, does, it just says Facebook user, but yeah. thank you for the question. That was good. Um, well, let's, uh, let's keep going through the stats here. So those are the detached houses. Um, and now semi-detached houses, I mean, we're still seeing increases there in terms of number of sales. So 30% increase in total sales and 3.5% increase. So it's down a little bit from the detached houses. Um, the row townhouses, they saw a 1.2% increase in their selling price. So they're at 285,000 and 260 uh, sales. Uh, in, in for them for the last month, which is an increase of 58%. So I think what we're also seeing here, when you're seeing these big numbers, because like even apartments had an increase of 30% year over year total number of sales and their price has finally gone up. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. But that's also year over year. So you have to remember that when we are looking at this type of market and these types of stats, it's comparing it to last February. Right. Last February was not like this February. Right. So, yeah, as, as we're seeing these crazy 60%, 58% increase in sales, that doesn't actually, that, that, that that's not fair. Yeah, yeah. It's not a fair comparison. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think that, you know, you just have to look at COVID as a, as a reset. And there was some, there was panic. Like no one, yeah. no one had done life in a pandemic we've seen you know some generations have seen war but like just we didn't know we didn't know what to expect and I think yeah. still for companies they're still looking you know probably some need to hire but they still just don't know what to expect oil and gas you know the commodity prices are higher than we've seen in a while too so those are things that no one could have probably predicted last year if we were to have a conversation you know, with, uh, with the version of ourselves from totally. a year ago. Absolutely. Um, so the last thing I want to show everybody here today is on this page here. So this is again, so you can see the URL on the bottom of the screen, uh, chamberlaingroup.ca slash Calgary real estate market, uh, with dashes in between. So you can come here and we update this every month. Um, and so, uh, right now we are still a hundred plus percent of homes are selling that have listed in the last three months. So yeah. I think the first month was either November or December. Um, so we are potentially three or four months into having more homes selling than 
uh, that are coming on the market or the current inventory, right? And so what that means is uh, the city of Calgary is currently sitting at 2.89 months of inventory with about, at this time, it was 4,000 homes on the market and 4,200 homes that have sold over the last 90 days. And so this 2.89 number is really important because again, that's showing you, is this more of a seller's, a balanced or a buyer's market? Because a seller's market uh, really is, is when you are around that two and a half, three or less. Three to four is kind of a balance where it's good for everybody. And, and four plus is, is when you get into that buyer's market. And so looking at these numbers, um, it's just saying the whole city is really leaning into a seller's market, over, generally speaking, right? And uh, when you scroll down further, um, you can actually play with the tabs. You can look at average sold prices of communities. Uh, all this stuff is in here. Um, and, and you can even sort it by price ranges. So if you're a buyer and you're looking for something between four and 500, well, you can click that and get a sense of what communities, so let's say you're looking down south, you can say, okay, well, what communities have the average price right now of that's in between four to five? Um, or vice versa, if you're looking at 800 to 1.1, well, here's the average prices of those communities there. So, um, and then the good thing here is looking at months of inventory. So it's just a great place to do research, understanding what the market's doing, what it looks like. Um, and again, a zero to two and a half months is green. And that's a lot of green. Well, and I think in all of this too is, you know, it is, the market is going up and we're on an incline. And so it's really important when you're setting up out a plan to move, um, if we're on the move, if you're, if the market's inclining, you know, yes, we want multiple offers and all those sorts of things, but how, how do you ride, how do you ride to the top and how yeah. do you not, there's been, you know, some houses where no one's done an updated CMA in six months, they list the property and then they get all these multiple offers. Well, that's, you know, of course the market, it, it, data is always changing and, and stats are always changing. So it's something to, you know, uh, you know, give us a call or your realtor a call and just have those conversations because that is, is not staying the same. Um, yeah. So, and this map is fascinating and uh, fun to, fun to watch as a generalization. Um, but, but you really need a plan to, to kind of make sure you're not selling too soon. Um, it's, and, and, and where your situation is at. Yeah, absolutely. Cause I mean, this, this map tells you a story but yeah. it doesn't tell you the streets inside that. It doesn't yeah. give you the details. And this is why it's great for research and just starting to look, right? Um, but it just shows you how much the city is actually sitting in the green there. Yeah. Um, and, and further down, again, for those that, that are interested in looking at this, um, you have the detached home market. It's going to show you active and sold listings, months of inventory, attached homes, and then apartments. Um, and so, I mean, right now, you know, the city center has 8.6 months of inventory for condos, whereas the Northeast has 3.5. So the condo market is not bad everywhere. Right. Uh, it's just depending on where you're looking. Uh, and same with single family homes, right? Like city center is 3.9, but everywhere else is pretty much under two or right around two, except for the West, which is 2.7. So, um, so there's some good things to, to dig into and, and look in here. Um, and so, yeah, I think that kind of that wraps up kind of the thoughts. I mean, if you have further questions about the market, uh, about what you're seeing out there, uh, setting up a plan, a strategy, all that kind of stuff, uh, just let us know, reach out to the agent you have. Uh, we're here to help give you second yeah. opinions, uh, be involved in the process as much as we can. Our team is here, we're ready. Uh, you can always reach us at 587-316-5400, uh, which is our main line, and we'll connect you with uh, someone on our team or ourselves, we'll get in touch. Uh, or you can always in email into info at chamberlaingroup.ca. Yeah. And then just if you look in the corner here, if you've made it through the whole video, uh, <laughs> there's our love with love where you live uh, challenge. Uh, we're going to be announcing more details on that uh, next week, um, yeah. how you can how we can really embrace uh, the city we live in and support local. And there's going to be fun prizes. It's going to be, be, be good. So, yeah. So love where you live is. 
um, is actually kind of a, a brand that we're, we're starting and, and we have lots of merch that you can get and some swag, but we're going to have a fun event that we're putting together that is all around loving where you live. So stay tuned, watch all of our, watch our channels next week for that. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it and the event itself is going to be the end of March. So yeah. something to look forward to in the sun. So on that note, I think we're good. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you later.